everybody. It is me, Sherelle, here with Lovely Hustles. And today I have a really good hustle for you to jump onto. And we're just going to get right into it. All right. So a very good hustle that I actually had of my own is a cleaning business. For one, it's going to pick up because the holidays are coming. The holidays are here and people want their houses to get clean, their homes to get clean, their businesses to get cleaned. Um, there's a lot of holiday parties that are coming up soon. So people are preparing and the first thing they need to do is clean up. There's business out there for you. There's business everywhere, anywhere you can think of, any building, any space you can offer your cleaning services to this business. Let me show you how to actually get things started up. We're gonna talk about startup costs. We're gonna talk about supplies. We're gonna talk about all that stuff coming up right here next. Okay, so before we jump into that, let me just give you my backstory with my business. My husband and I started a cleaning business years ago. Um, the only reason it did not work out was because I hurt myself like really bad. <laughs> I hurt my knee and I was out for like six weeks um in a cast and then after that i had to like relearn how to walk and all this crazy stuff so when my husband started the business right before we were gonna start doing and working with clients um he had to do it by himself so it didn't really work for him to do it by himself because we actually had like a barber shop actually as one of our clients it was a very high ceiling building it was very very dusty very very hairy so um it was a good test for us to, to see how it is to actually clean businesses versus just the home because there's a whole nother plethora of things that we ran into when we found out. So it was definitely um, a learning curve for us. But um, the cleaning business that we actually had was, was great. We had our business lined up. We had uh, a business name. We had an LLC for it. Um, we have bought a bunch of supplies and you don't need a lot of money to start up with this, guys. I mean, a thousand is a good amount. $500 can get you everything you need to start cleaning homes tomorrow, right? So let's get into it. So first thing you want to do is figure out what you're wanting to clean. What is the space or the area or the niche in the cleaning business that you're interested in? You can be a contractor through uh, office buildings. You can just do it um, all by yourself and just go to different homes and build your clientele that way. A lot of times, um, a lot of people get work through word of mouth. Um, I used to actually have a house cleaner that would come clean our home every two weeks and um, I found her through somebody else. So it's just that easy to get work. But yes, find that niche. Are you doing more of the commercial side? Are you doing the residential side? Um, is it just a seasonal thing for you? Definitely make sure you and decide what you want to do because then you'll know what supplies to get. Now let's talk about these supplies. There are a lot of places, if you look locally in your area, there are places that are like warehouses, wholesale warehouses that you can actually visit or Google them first before you go and check out their inventory and see what it is that you want or that you need. When you buy things wholesale, of course, they're a lot cheaper, but they want you to buy them in bulk. If you are not interested in taking that route of visiting the actual big warehouses where they only sell cleaning items, cleaning everything, um, then go to your Home Depot. Um, a lot of times their prices are lower because they do have more of a bulk type sale there. So you can get 50, 60 towels, you know, for a great price, or, you know, you can get certain cleaning sprays and stuff like that in like a double or triple package for a great price. So if you're not interested in the warehouses, make sure you check out like your Home Depot, your Lowe's, those type of places, because they have those things in bigger, uh, in a bigger capacity, more in a bulk, kind of like a Sam's Club thing, but not really Sam's Club. So definitely look into where you want to get your supplies from and price that out. With COVID going crazy, of course you need a lot of good cleaning supplies, right? You need a mop, you need a mop bucket. Um, you'll also need things like a vacuum cleaner. You'll need a plethora of towels. You're gonna need a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of towels because you don't want to mix some dirt from the bathroom and be using that same towel to clean the kitchen counter. Like, no, no, not okay. All right, different types of scrubbers and cleaners. If you're cleaning a shower door, um, a towel is great, but you may want to look into something better that actually works, that gets those deep um, hard water spots and stains off of the glass windows. There's a lot to consider when you're doing these things. Also dusting. Um, you definitely want to have uh, something to dust with because you're going to want to dust everywhere, of course. And another supply you don't re realize you might most likely need is a ladder. That is something that we had to invest in after the fact and ladders are not cheap. 
but a ladder is great to have so that you can reach those high, you know, unreachable places. It's good to have a ladder and have um, a lot of long handled uh, supplies as well to reach certain areas and get into places where they don't. Um, degreasers, that's a really good cleaner to have as well because um, a lot of times in people's kitchens and areas like that where there can easily be grease buildup, you can just spray it, leave it there for a second and come back and, and wipe it off clean. So definitely make sure that you look into the type of cleaners that you wanna have. Make sure you have cleaners specifically for the bathroom. Make sure you have certain cleaners for the kitchen. If they have a stainless steel fridge, right? You wanna have stainless steel cleaner. You don't wanna just spray Clorox on there and, and wipe it and be done, right? And then if they have like a marble countertop, you also wanna cater to that as well and get marble countertop cleaners because there are some out there. Make sure you do a lot of really good research on some of the best and top cleaners for certain areas and certain items. I have an actual wooden table as my dining room table and it's a huge wooden table. There are a lot of things that you cannot spray on this table and clean it with. So you have to be very knowledgeable about the items that you're gonna use when you decide to clean these different surfaces and areas in people's homes. Let me just say one more thing. <laughs> Another thing you're gonna need is trash bags. Have a lot of trash bags. Have them big, have them small, have a lot of trash bags because a lot of time when you're cleaning up, you're gonna be throwing things in the trash. Use your trash bag, supply that, offer that. I think it's good to do that, is to, to have your own trash bags and things like that too. And even gloves, protect yourself. If you need a mask, wear a mask as well. Another good one, is shoe covers. But you know, just protect your feet so that you're not tracking any type of dirt or anywhere, um, anywhere in the home. All those items I just listed are all not required, but definitely consider them for your business. I would say $500 would definitely get you all of those supplies like times two or three, definitely. I know a lot of prices have gone up, so be very uh, cautious of what your spending is and what your limit is and what you want to have. Um, in hand and in your inventory. Consider the prices of everything, but $500 should definitely get you all the supplies you need to get started, literally. So on the commercial side, in commercial spaces, they really just want you to vacuum, dust, um, do some wiping down and change the trash. A lot of times they don't want you to get into a lot of stuff on people's desks, depending on the type of office space that you're in. If it's something more empty, then you have free space to kind of clean everything. But if it's somewhere where it's a personal office desk of someone's where their personal items could be there in their drawers, I would say kind of stay away from that, but just maybe lightly dust. You consider it when you are working in commercial spaces because a lot of times you're around a lot of information. Just be cautious of where you are when you clean, especially on the commercial side, because if things are misplaced, out of place, you're gonna be the one to blame because you were there last. Also working in the commercial space, I would say that a lot of times your hours will be evening hours or later in the day type hours. So, you know, because they're in the office all day, right? A lot of times when they contract cleaning companies or cleaners to come through, it's not until the evening time when everyone is gone. And a lot of times they'll even have specific instructions or certain things that they definitely want to be done and cleaned. One thing that we ran into when we had a actual uh, business that was under contract with us was, like I said, we had the barbershop. It was a pretty big, decent sized barbershop. And that was when we realized we needed a ladder because they had these huge big pipes that were visible in the ceiling. Normally there's a ceiling, you know, that blocks the pipes, but they actually painted their pipes black and made it part of their aesthetic, which was nice. But cleaning those things were not nice and not easy at all. Because normally when you think about dust, you think about something very simple on a table and it, you could just see it and it flies away. But this dust was like, sticky dust. I don't know if you ever know anything about that, but the dust was sticky, hard to pick up. It wasn't something that you could just use like a duster to get off. You actually had to clean these things off and that's what they wanted us to do, but they didn't want to pay extra for that. When we did more research on our end, we realized that that was like a deep cleaning situation that we did not offer in our services that she wanted us to do without paying extra for it. We went back out and tried again and cleaned the space and it just, it just didn't work out. It did not work out. It was not to her liking, but we definitely explained to her like what you're asking for, you needed this type of cleaning service to do that. That was that. And it was lesson learned because a lot of times when you work in different types of commercial spaces, 
the dust and the dirt is different. And there's a different type of cleaning that you have to do for each of these type of spaces, depending on the type of cleaning that's needed. So make sure you definitely do research. I think the best thing you can do for your business as far as marketing is to just create some little flyers on Canva really quick. You can create a free account with Canva, create some flyers, simply put the name of your business, maybe logo, logo colors, and contact information. That's all they need. You don't have to sit there and give them a long spill. Hey, I'm a local cleaner here in the area. If you would like your business or your home to be cleaned, please give me a call and keep it moving. It's not a lot of like serious marketing that has to go into it. Um, but if you are very passionate about cleaning and doing that, then I would definitely suggest to maybe get like a sticker on your car. Um, I see a lot of uh, maid and cleaning services that just put their billboard on their vehicles and that is how they get business. So that's an easy, cheap way to definitely get business without having to spend a whole lot of money to market. All right, so how are we making this money? When you're cleaning and when you offer your services, I would say a good base start, depending on the space, um, I would say $100. $100 is a, is a good fair amount. Um, and if it's a two-story home or there's more bedrooms or there's a bunch of bathrooms, I would definitely ch upcharge for that because the bathroom cleaning takes time. If you're going to do it well and do it right, you are going to take your time and it's going to take time to clean bathrooms. A lot of times, um, that's where she is the most, our, our cleaning lady that we had. She was in the bathroom the longest and she was very specific about everything she did and she cleared things out. Like she was very, very good. And there were a lot of certain things that she would not touch, especially like in our bedroom and things like that. So she would dust and vacuum for sure. And then ask, hey, do you want anything extra done or is everything okay? You know, that type of thing. For pricing, definitely start around $100. Um, that's for probably like a, a two or three bedroom, two bath, I would say. Um, if it's an extra floor or an extra story, I will go to 150 and so on and so forth. But you guys, cleaning a house is not one hour. It's not a one hour job unless you're doing the very bare minimum of cleaning. Like you're just spot cleaning, if anything, right? But um, if you're going to be in a home, an actual home and clean the entire house, give yourself at least at the very bare minimum two hours. One thing I would definitely suggest is don't take on more than what you can handle just because the money is good. Make sure you can handle that job. Make sure that you can do it is what it is that they want you to do as far as the cleaning goes. Another thing you can look into as well is other cleaning services you can offer within your cleaning business. Um, one thing that we had actually looked into and researched was uh, power washing. I don't know what those machines cost, but once you get your business up and going and you have these appointments where you're making $100 and $150 every couple hours, take that money or some of it, put it to the side and get that machine if that's something that you're interested in. If there's any other type of cleaning machine you'd like that just, you know, cleans floors, a floor waxer, those things, you know, you can definitely buy those over time from just working with your cleaning business. And you can offer those services at a higher price, of course, because that's more elite cleaning. But it's definitely good to have it and good to actually offer that as well. If you're cleaning someone's home and you say, hey, you know, I see you need a little power washing. You know, we could we do that as well. Oh, you do. Yeah. For an extra X, Y, Z, I can do that and I can do this and we can be done in a few hours. So you know, as you grow your cleaning business, it can it can really grow fast, put it like that. Um, just make sure that you have reliable transportation. Make sure you have a good booking site that you can keep up with all of your appointments because a lot of times as um, a cleaning service, people want you to come frequently, right? They want you to come either weekly, bi-weekly, maybe once a month, or they want you to come during the holidays, after Christmas, after Thanksgiving, you know, that kind of thing too. So you have a good booking system that you can be able to stay organized with so that you're not losing clients because you're not showing up and you didn't know you were supposed to show up. One thing I highly suggest you do uh, with your cleaning business when you're marketing to others or when you start to gain clients is instill trust. Our cleaning lady, actually, we gave her a key after a while because it was just kind of hard for us to navigate who was gonna be home when she got here, who was gonna make sure she could get in the door and who's gonna stay here for two and a half, three hours while she's cleaning until she leaves. So it was easier after time, once we began to trust her, we actually gave her a key to our home and she would actually text us and say, hey, I'm here, hey, I'm leaving, door locked, you know? So that kind of thing is very important to do because I think it gives your client like a breath of fresh air, like, woo. And then even on the commercial side as well, if you're gonna be working in the evenings, if they're not a place that has like security in the evening time that can let you in, they're gonna be giving you a key as well. So make sure you're very responsible with those type of items and instill trust in your clients. Let them know like, hey, 
I'm not going to do anything fraud or take anything from you. I'm just here to clean and do my job. If you do decide to take your cleaning business to the next level and offer different services, make sure that you have a service list. Um, a lot of times people don't know what costs what or how much is what. And be specific about what you offer in your generalized services for cleaning homes or, commercial, or the commercial side of things. Um, sometimes people expect you to do something or like for example, if they don't if they don't dust my blinds, right? I thought that they dusted. Well, I didn't discuss with them that I wanted that to be done and they didn't tell me that that's something that they do. So it's kind of good to make sure you um, break down to your clients exactly what it is that you do. And you can create a list for that as well, whether it's dusting, mopping, sweeping, um, bathroom cleaning, uh, scrubbing, whatever it is that you do in specific areas of the home, I definitely highly suggest that you create a list. If they want anything extra, anything more, you can say, okay, well, I'll do it. Or you can say, okay, for this price, you know, for an upcharge of this, I'll add that to your services. So having a price list is very important. Also having a list of what you do, your services that you offer within your cleaning service, right? That's very good to have as well. Hopefully you guys are inspired to start a cleaning business. It is so super easy. It's like almost dummy proof, if that makes any sense at all. So I highly recommend that you guys look into this, do your research, definitely do your research. Get your pricing together of what you're gonna charge. Make sure you price what it's gonna cost to get all the supplies that you need. So hopefully this video has helped you to consider a very good side hustle. It does not have to be a full-time job. This can be something on the side, like I said, but if you want it to be full-time, hey, do your thing. It's definitely, uh, it's it, there's a space for it. There's space for everybody to do this job. All right, so thank you guys so much for watching my video. Please make sure that you subscribe, like, hit the bell, leave a comment. Actually, let me grab something really quick. My next side hustle um, is going to be a good one. I'm going to be showing you how to create books and journals online. This is my Black Girl Travel Journal that I created about a year ago and I sell it currently on Amazon. So I'm gonna be talking about this next video.